This is Three Drinks Down. I'm Nate. I'm James. And today we are here to ask, is Penelope building the future of bourbon? Let's find out. Today on the show, we have Build 1 and Build 2 for the Architect series from Penelope. First, let's get into what exactly is the Architect series. Yeah, and that's super interesting because what they're trying to do is actually architect a bourbon to a specific flavor profile. So the way they're going about this is, and it really shows in the back of the bottle, is they're trying to say, here's what we're trying to make the mark on. And we're going to do that by toasting staves or trying different barrel staves or trying different techniques from the bourbon as it came out of the barrel initially to meet this particular profile. Now, this isn't necessarily new. Uh, for those of you familiar with the Maker's Mark line, they are already doing this in a certain way. Right. But in a sense, you don't, they haven't put out there, I don't know this to be true, but Maker's isn't saying we're trying to make this. They're just putting out and blending and finding unique flavors with a thousand and one combinations as they market. Yeah, it seems that the Arctic series is very purposeful. And again, you can kind of see that on the back uh, with the flavor wheel, the flavor palette there um, on the back of each of those. And each of these are both uniquely different. Um, and you know, obviously we haven't gotten into each of these at all yet, but we're gonna see just how different they are and kind of are they hitting the marks they wanna hit on for each of these builds. Let's get into the nose on this one. So I got uh, build number one in my glass here. Same here, build number one. We're gonna kind of go back and forth and AB this a little bit, I think. There's actually a ton of oak on this. Like a ton, ton of ton oak. Of, ton You're getting a beautiful creamy vanilla though, kind of. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think to me, it's very oak dominant on the nose. I don't, I like that though. And, and I get the French influence there. For sure. I this see. was a French stave, I, if I believe they both are, I'm not mistaken, but um, versus, you know, if you have that new, even if they use new American again, you get that over oak experience, I think in a lot of ways. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely way more oak than you would normally get on something of this age and this proof. So it's not age stated, but uh, if you go and look at the literature and I can pull up the product card on it. I haven't seen the product card for batch two, but I've seen it or build two. I've seen it for build one. They do say it's uh, the distillate is between four and five and a half years old. So it is very young. So they're working with the base of a young product and they honestly, they gave it a little character for that, in my opinion. Yeah, so I think what they're trying to do here is trying to give like your normal, like average, non shaded blended product something a little bit more proof, you know, to mm -hmm. be able to have a different experience and different character, I guess, to what makers. Honestly, some other uh, producers are doing as well. Yeah, I know. Uh, so you, Bardstown's doing it, obviously, too. Uh, well, yeah, a lot this of their was series, actually so. done uh, in collaboration with Bardstown, so there you go. but at, at Bardstown, I believe. Uh, yep. It's so. like we planned that. Yeah. yeah. Want to move on number two? Uh, number two. All right. Number two. Oh man, yeah. I, it, it's coming up a lot sweeter to me on that. Yeah. Almost um, perfumey-ish. For sure. I, I mean, the initial thought, I almost thought this was like a sour mash. Uh, and I was like. Oh, really I could good. absolutely see that. Now, yeah. you, now you're saying that, it's not planting the idea in my head, but I'm really thinking that and I'm like, wow. Yeah, but it's definitely like a big perfumey thing. The yeah. florals come up on this. Huge floral. It's very so, different from the first one. And again, they're trying to improve this and hit this particular mark because you, know, on the, you look at the blueprint on the back of the bottle, it's the exact same thing. In a lot of ways, I feel like this is almost the polar opposite of that first because the vanilla's there, but before when I got a creamy vanilla, now I'm just getting that hint. Yeah, it's really interesting. It's funny because like in build number two, it actually comes out of the of the control here. Um, you can kind of see the control dotted lines and then uh, around it, it actually looks like the control has gone, uh, you know, kind of fruit on the nose. And then this one kind of actually has like a, an only, only goes to about two and a half, it looks like, where the actual control goes to around three. You can see where they tried not to adjust the fruit too much and they really seem to have achieved that there where you start to see the diagram really changes off to the side where they're pulling in that vanilla flavor. And we picked that up. We hadn't even looked at that. Yeah, I haven't looked at it, uh, truth be told, but you can clearly see the perception there. Oak perception on the nose, very rounded towards it. And then vanilla as well, same thing. So super interesting that obviously, you know, they're they're giving it all out there for you. Um, you know, obviously a lot of distilleries have tasting notes, but I think this is a really cool way to do that. It still brings up an interesting question in my mind. I'm going to hold until after we taste it. How many builds do you think it's going to take for them to get to where they want to be? And is that by design of the series? Because we know these producers have to keep putting out more and more distillate and things. So right. if, if they think they can achieve this in seven iterations, it's kind of like name that tune in reverse, right? Yeah, I mean, it could all be very intentional. Like, hey, like, look at our journey, our progress as we as we try mm -hmm. and get to where we want to be. And this is actually where we want to go, you know, all yeah. things considered. Will the control. next control series be something where if it takes them seven iterations here, they can do it in four? Who knows? Also, what is the control? Well, the yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna come back into the tasting here and see how these things shake out because the noses, obviously there was some very stark differences, but I wonder what happens when it hits the old palate here. And give it a little swirl. 
do it again. Right? Are you really drinking bourbon? I just right? swirl. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 I picked up on it. All right. The mouthfeel accountability is going to be excellent. I hope so. I hope so. Because if I don't know how we're going to hold accountability if it's not. Awesome. <laughs> Man, ton of oak. Ton of oak. <laughs> just a lot of oak. There's, there's a spice on the front path of the palate. Like, um, it's definitely baking spice, but it's hidden under the hidden under the oak. So it's hitting me like a sharper, it's not cinnamon, but it's hitting me like a sharp cinnamon does. Yeah, I, maybe I would uh, attribute it to like more of an all spice. Um, yeah, than a, not anise cinnamon. though. It's not going down that Certainly road. Certainly not anise. Oh God, I would not like it if it was, but a decent Kentucky Hug, I think it's what, what, 104 proof, right? 104, this is first drink of the day for me. Sam. Yeah, I haven't had any. Yeah, there was no judgment if you said no. So I am not wrong. End of video. On first reaction, I didn't get a lot of back half palate at all. Yeah, interesting. So it, it, to me, it was just like a Kentucky hug and then but like your mouth is still kind of searching. Mm -hmm. It does have like a, a much superior mouthfeel to something of similar age, which I really appreciate. So I think I might be more of a stickler. But again, it could be that mouthfeel accountability thing. But honestly, uh, I really enjoy when there's actually a big mouthfeel on these whiskeys. It's hitting the gums nice. It just stops mid palate. I don't get a lot after that. Even the long burn doesn't sit there. At 104, I would not have guessed 104. I thought 110 plus, if you'd ask me. Now again, first drink of the day, you can be like, okay, Nate, you know, you gotta sit there and get into it, but. Yeah, no, the, the hug is definitely, a second sip for me, it's still there. It's the, still the same kind of embrace. Um, oh, I got a lot more vanilla extract on yeah. that second. Yeah, but again, it stops mid palate. I, it I, does. It is not a very long finish whatsoever. And that's not necessarily a huge knock, you know? If you want something that's a bit more, drinkable, you have, you want to come back and drink it, then perfect, you know? But if you want that long finish, you want to sit with it, this is probably not one of those whiskeys. No, this is, you know, this strikes me almost as a, as a good end of the night. Type. Yeah, for sure. On to build number two. You gotta always nose it before you drink it. I just like- I You didn't to swirl though. It. Do you really drink oh, bourbon? Man. I had, I was more time. Holy I crap. It. Oh yeah. Yeah, I, I'll hold my holy crap. Well, you already said it, so you didn't hold it. Though. I'll hold expounding on my holy crap. Well, these are very different. Starkly. And, and, and you them. would not think so by looking at the little lines on the back. That doesn't give anything away. We're not <laughs> able to tell you anything by that until you really taste this. So um, to me, that big spice thing that was there and kind of that mid palette is not there anymore. Mm -hmm. And um, it carries back the palate a little more fun. It's a guy has more of a finish, a uh, longer finish, and it is not as aggressive with that Kentucky head, which is weird because it's literally the same proof. But it me. could be that we've coated full yeah, growth, full point, palette now. So I'll give it the benefit of I did take some water, so it's, yeah. I did as well, we'll come back to, we'll, we'll come back to number one. After the vanilla went more marshmallowy for me. Oh, uh, which I love, I yeah. love, I got a lot more of that toast mm -hmm. rather than like, just like new oak, um, which I honestly would highly prefer. You know, I think you guys will find out kind of where my palette sits, but I'm typically like, some stuff it's that like means. The jowls for me too, for sure. Like it's this does not hit the gums the way same way. I'm big. I'm a big fan. Uh, we just opened this one. Uh, full disclosure: this one was just opened. The first one has been open for a small amount of time, but it basically mm -hmm. had nothing out of it, as you'll see in the shots. Um, so I don't think it affected that very much. But man, this, this has a hint of red fruit. Also, what red fruit? Uh, I'm leaning more like towards a strawberry, believe it or not. Really? Yeah, but that's me, and I'm weird with red fruit. I am. Getting better with citrus, I'm getting better with dark fruit, but red fruit to me, um, but not not strong. Sure. So you can be, I can be wrong. I'm looking for it. Um, if you don't find it, it's fine. Yeah, and we all obviously we have different palettes, which I I personally love. If we had the same palettes, it would be a little boring, right? You know, uh, I like to be able to. I'm getting find it as the transition happens from the front to the back to the second the mid palette. There's this little on the outside of your tongue. There's just this little pop. It's kind of like a oh, little okay. strawberry. Okay. Yeah. I. I I can I can get there. There's something that you, but maybe you're not seeing the same way. Fair enough. Yeah, for me, I actually get more of like a creamsicle. Drink. Oh, I could like, go with you on that. Yeah, I think that's kind of where I'm at. I get a little bit of that citrus. It's a fruited, but it's yeah. Right, but but again, it's not it's not tart. It's not um, which is weird because like the first one opened up as almost a sour mash. You know, mm -hmm. the other one did not at all to me. Again, still very floral off the nose, which I love the palette more than the second one, which is four square. Absolutely, I. I uh, uh, you know, if we're A-Bing these and I go back and I want to kind of go back to the first one and give it a second shot, I won't probably A-B them truly. Right. But I want to see what happens when I go back. I left myself a little in the first one. Same, same. Uh, well, let's go back to the first one. Yeah, let's do that real quick and then let's come back and discuss our findings. Absolutely. Absolutely. The notice this has opened up a little bit for me, which is nice. I feel like it's a little less uh, of that oak down. getting a little herbal off the nose now. 
Okay. Slightly. Nothing, again, when I say these things, if I say little, I mean little. Okay, guys, I'm not saying like, oh, you're gonna get this for sure. Okay, that's more grounded now. It's and again, so it, I think we had that first drink situation going on a little bit. I think we did too, which I, I love coming back to it, but I still think to me it's like vanilla extract. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, the, I think if, I, if I'm guessing, and, and this is just pure armchair distiller now, which I am not a distiller clearly, I'm guessing they said, let's throw this first one at the wall and know it's gonna be this because we threw this, this these two type of French stave and this other one in there. And we know those profiles because we've used them in our bourbons before. Right. And they said, let's see where that goes and then let's figure out where we're adjusting. Because you like, like you said, number one is technically a control. Yeah, that's when I was like, what's the actual control? I know they have control bikes right. here, but then it tells what the control is. And so to me, it's like, dude, was it the the bourbon without the staves? Was it a different bourbon? Was right. it technically this? Is build one's uh, control for for build two? Like, you know, I don't know. I don't know. So where are you leaning, James? Uh, for me, it's, it's pretty easy. It's build number two. Um, I just prefer, I think it's uh, more well-rounded. I think it's less dominated by one factor. I felt like it was a much better bourbon than build number one, uh, which again, you know, honestly, uh, leading back to your question earlier, what is the game plan for, for these guys? What is the game plan for the series? You know, is there a little bit of consumerism? Well, so the hard part for me to answer that question is I posed it earlier and then I've obviously been trying to like engage with you guys, but if I don't have one and two and I pick up number three off the shelf, how do I know exactly how this is working? That's true, and that's right? pretty so, tough. So there's a potential a potential that people could view this as it's a grab because you gotta have one and two if you're getting number three. I also think, um, you know, they could also be doing it in a way where like, hey, we know what we can achieve and we know how to achieve it, but we're gonna lengthen this process just so we can make many batches. Right. You know, just so we can have a series that is ongoing. And realistically, is that necessarily a bad thing? Absolutely not. You're gonna get different variations of the same thing. And these are very different bourbons, mm -hmm. even though they're technically treated very similarly, you know? We don't know exactly what the age statement is, how many were blended, or how much state were used, any process in anywhere, but you know, you have a lot of information here that's kind of guiding you to, uh, to yeah. a product. But it is a weird thing, right? Like if I jump in and, and, and build three, four, five, right? how do I really know what I'm getting? Now you could say there's some similar things on the market like Discovery Series. Now those are vastly different sure. products, but the point is they're discovering something and going a certain direction. It's not a build like this per se. Um, so I too thought number two was Excellent, I preferred it to number one. I thought number one was something that, uh, honestly, I probably wouldn't pay the price. These are uh, around 60, $69 retail? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, 60 or 70, I can't recall. I'm not sure I would have paid that for, for number one because honestly, for the age of the product and what you have there, I don't think it meets there. Number two is approaching what I would think I would pay for that, to be honest with you. So value-wise for me, I'm looking at it and saying, I think that's what the consumer is ultimately gonna care about. Um, and then the, you'll be your secondary shit lords and stuff out there too, whatever, that's fine, maybe eventually. Um, but I would tell you right now, if I'm looking at this and I'm a consumer and these are the two that's available to me, which they are fairly limited release, number two is the winner out of these for me at the moment. But you would hope that would be the case, right? They should be getting closer to what they're aiming for. Yeah, exactly. They should be improving upon what their what their set goal was. And to me, it seems like they are. So I'd be very curious to see what number three, four, five, et cetera, et cetera, hold in the future. Um, also really funny, you know, usually, uh, you know, batch one was better, but uh, in this case, nah, bro. Um, build number two is better. Build number two is better. So what do you think about Penelope? Do you think their approach is interesting here? Or do you think it's just a grab? What's on the comments below? Don't forget to subscribe and like, hit that like button. Like, dude. <laughs> hey.